Can you all hear me? Good morning. Good morning, my name is Officer Hoja. I'm with USCIS. I just have a few announcements to make before we start. Um, if you could, just a reminder, if you could please turn all your cell phones off uh, before the ceremony starts. Um, wanted to start off by letting you know that you will have to update your status with Social Security Administration after the ceremony is complete. Um, make sure that you take it probably you should probably wait a week or so uh, before you go in and change your status with them just so our systems are in line um, but make sure that you go and update your status that you are now a US citizen um, make sure that you update your status with a DMV and um, the other part that I wanted to mention was uh, traveling outside the United States if you're planning on traveling outside the United States um, in the next couple of weeks, we have taken your green card, so you will have to apply for a um, passport, a U.S. passport, before you can travel. So if it's emergency travel, make sure that you can make an appointment with the Department of State, one of, um, one of the offices, probably the closest being Chicago. Um, but make sure you call before you go if you need to travel soon. If not, then fill out your uh, passport application, which is in your packets, and then make an appointment with the post office. And uh, you have to make an appointment for the first time that you go in for your passport, for your passports. Um, deriving citizenship. If you are naturalizing today and you have children that are under 18, they derive citizenship from you. So. There's two ways that you can prove that. One is with your naturalization certificate, you can apply for their passport, their US passports. Um, or the second way is you can file an N-600 um, and that will give you the certificate of naturalization for your child. But there is a few with that. So you're right. And um, you are also now eligible to bring uh, family members to the United States uh, through family petitions and if you'd like to know more about that uh, you can go on our website uscis.gov or if you have any general questions maybe we can answer them up here okay oh and also the most important part please make sure that your certificates of naturalization your name is spelled correctly your date of birth is correct uh, when you receive the certificates um, if you have any questions the three, us three officers will be right there. Okay, thank you. Congratulations. All rise. Oyez, oyez, oyez. District Court for the Southern District of Illinois is now in session and is called to order for the naturalization ceremony. All persons have a business before this honorable court. Draw near, give attention, and you shall be heard. God save these United States, the great state of Illinois, and this honorable court. The Honorable Lori K. Grandy presiding. Presentation of the colors, please. Complete.
please be seated. Thank you very much, Mr. Tessero and the Beverly East Jazz Band for that, that lovely rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. We appreciate it. Uh, welcome, 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 everybody. Candidates, uh, U.S. Uh, uh, Attorney uh, Karalia Rajakapol, uh, Mayor Ecker, uh, Mayor Gregory, Mayor Dreyer, and friends and family of the candidates. Uh, my name is Laura Grandy, and I am the Chief Judge of the United States Bankruptcy Court for the Southern District of Illinois. Welcome to our, my hometown. Welcome to Oktoberfest. Yeah. It, we started this a few years ago when we had the Belleville Bicentennial, and it, and it was such a great event to bring everyone out here and to enjoy the celebration that, that we kept it up year after year. Unfortunately, we get the hottest day of the year every time we do this, and, and, uh, and I appreciate the heat because I'm inside a black oven here, okay? <laughs> this thing does not breathe at all. Uh, but welcome. It's so cool to have this during the Oktoberfest. The Oktoberfest is a celebration of Belleville's German heritage. And this year it's really special because we have a group of citizens from Paderborn, Germany. Paderborn, Germany is Belleville's sister city. It's a program that was started several years ago. And, uh, and we're so lucky to have them with us because they understand, understand this Germanness in us. They understand that we love bratwurst and not worst and schnitzel with bindles. We love all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and when they come, they make it even better. And uh, so right now, I'm gonna, we have someone special this morning. I met him last night at the dedication of the Paderborn Square. It's Mayor Dreyer from uh, Paderborn, Germany, and he's gonna come up and just say a few welcoming words. He said no more than a half hour. Yeah, dear friends, I want to say a warm welcome here in Belleville. I want to say a warm welcome in America and I want to bring you the best wishes from my friends from Paderborn. Say yes, they are the friends from Paderborn and we are very happy that we are here. More than 30 years are in big friendships and so it is for me very important to say you a warm welcome to the Oktoberfest in Belleville. A warm welcome, nice to see you. the hands raised those of you from Paderborn here today oh, there they are over there hi welcome welcome okay what a great day we are about to have 50 new US citizens from 27 different countries come join our ranks they range in ages from 21 years old to 76 years old uh, after I administer the oath of allegiance today we're gonna give you folks this really great opportunity and this is even a better opportunity for us because we're gonna pass a microphone to each one of you and let you say a few words about yourself, maybe where you're from, what you love, talk about your family, what you do, whatever. It, it's, it's open mic time. So think about what you're going to say because we're going to pass the mic one by one. Uh, and, and that's, to me, the best part of the day. Uh, you know, for most of us, it was easy. We were born here. It was simple. We didn't have to take any tests. We didn't have to get a bunch of boxes checked. We didn't have to have the Attorney General approve us as citizens. We were simply born here. You, on the other hand, have gone through a list. We know you've had to check off a lot of boxes, and, and the stories that you're going to tell us today, I think, will make us all appreciate what we have here as citizens of the United States. And the cool thing is, after I administer the oath today, your votes are going to count the same. You're going to have the same national anthem. And for the first time today, folks, we will get to say with them the Pledge of Allegiance to our country as they say it. So it's a first for all of us today. Now, as I said, I'm the Chief Judge of the Bankruptcy Court. Don't be worried, don't be worried. It's not a sign of our economic times or anything. In fact, didn't we get that little half percent uh, uh, reduction this week in the mortgage rate? That was kind of cool. Uh, no, I, I am, uh, as a, a bankruptcy judge, I am a, a judicial officer of the district court and authorized to conduct these ceremonies. And I gotta tell you, it's the best part of my job. It's, it's the time of day when nobody goes away from the courtroom unhappy, all right? So I really appreciate that. Um, as I prepared for today, I said I looked through and, and I, I saw all the things that you had to do. You had to take a bunch of tests, you had to have your fingerprints done. Ultimately, the Attorney General had to approve your, your um, being a citizen. And, uh, but I thought of all those things, the biggest thing was how brave you were. How brave you were to do this. You know, I, I grew up here. Raise your hand out there, folks, if you grew up in or around this community. Oh, look at that. Yeah, we, we've all just lived here. You, on the other hand, left everything you, you loved. You know, I worked in the building across the street. I lived just down the street from here when I grew up as a kid. 
I played in the same Belize jazz band. Well, not the same. We were a little older now, but uh, but playing in the same jazz band at Belize. So it was so easy for us. But you have made this very brave decision to leave everything familiar to to you, your families, uh, everything that made you comfortable to come here. Maybe it's just your, your local coffee shop. But now you're here, and we we could not be more happy. Maybe you came here to join other family. Maybe you came here for this opportunity of freedom, which is such a special gift in this country. But as part of the ceremony today, you're going to take an oath. And in that oath, you will renounce your political allegiance to, this, to the country of your birth. That does not mean you leave behind your traditions, your culture, your family, your love for where you came from. No, no, we want that. We want your traditions. We want your music. We want your dancing. We want your food. Believe me, we want your food. We love bratwurst, but after a while, you know, uh, we really want your food. Uh, so please share that, that uh, those things with us so we can understand your journey more. Uh, in preparing for today, I also thought if I had one wish for you, what would that wish be? That wish would be that you love where you live and you learn to love where you live as much as I do. I mean, when I'm in this town, I just feel giddy. I feel happy. It's like my space. I feel like I'm little Miss Belleville, you know, but so does pretty much everybody else that grew up here. I'm sure the mayor feels like she's little Miss Belleville. The, the folks out in the audience there that raised their hand that have lived there forever, they feel like they're little Miss Belleville because they have this attachment to a community. And I hope, my wish for you is that you will someday develop that too, if you haven't already. What's amazing is when we hear their speeches later, we'll find that some of these people have been here for a long time. So hopefully a lot of you have already developed that. But, but I have this little secret, this little trick that will help you become more connected to your community and it's called volunteering. Volunteering, it's really an important thing to do because when you do that, you show your community you care, you show your family you care, and you become involved with other people. And the cool thing is when you volunteer, you try to make something, you build something for your community. And when you do that with other people, suddenly you become friends with those people. And it's like, oh yeah, I worked with her, I know him. And, and you create this bond because you've built something together. This event here today is entirely run by volunteers. Uh, Carrie Frick, where are you? She always hides from me, but she's here somewhere. She's the volunteer that makes this thing happen, along with the three clubs that make this thing happen, the Sister Cities, the Shriners, and the Exchange Club. They make this event happen, and they do it with volunteers. And there's a lot of other events that are done with volunteers. Back there in the front row, we have a lot of ladies from Art on the Square sitting. That's a, that's a volunteer event that was founded by our mayor here, Mayor Gregory. And it is totally run by volunteers. About 300 volunteers run that event. And, and it's really a great opportunity to see art, but also to work with a bunch of people and become friends again. And, and you may wonder, well, why does this judge know so much about volunteering? Why, why does she think she's some expert on volunteering? Well, I don't think I'm an expert, but I've done it a little and done it a lot. But, but I knew this lady growing up, and, and that's kind of where I got my volunteer connection. She, uh, she was an incredible volunteer. She would, on Sundays, she would go to church and greet everybody. On Monday, she would go back to church and count the money, and then she would go volunteer at this store down the street called Twice Nice, which was a, a resale shop when all the proceeds went to benefit a community charity. Um, on Wednesdays, or Tuesdays, she'd go deliver Meals on Wheels. On Wednesday, she would um, uh, go uh, uh, back to church and pull bulletins and maybe practice handbells or something. On Thursday, she would go out to the Mind's Eye radio station where she would... Um, uh, read for the blind on the radio. She'd read in the morning newspaper for the blind. Even though she wasn't a morning person, she got up really early and did that. And on Fridays, sometimes she gave herself the day off. Most of the times, she'd be filling in for somebody else somewhere else. She was that kind of person. And, um, and the thing about her was, when you met her, she had so much joy. She beamed with happiness. She eluded, <gasps> eluded joy. And um, see, just like that guy, that kind of joy. And, uh, and people would always comment that about her, how much joy she had. And a lot of people say, well, how, how, does you, how do you know this woman so well? She was my mom. She was my mom. She lived to 102. She passed this last April. She led the Pledge of Allegiance for us here a few years ago. Her last volunteer event was counting money for this event. I think she did it in 1999. Uh, she was true to the end in her volunteerism. And uh, uh, she taught us a lot about volunteering. And the thing about that is when you volunteer, your family sees you volunteer. And suddenly, just like eating and breathing, volunteering is just part of what you do. It's like, I'm going to go to work today, and then I'm going to go volunteer. 
I'm going to go run the kids here, and then I'm going to go volunteer. And it's, and it's a great way not only to meet people, but to show your community how much you love them. Uh, and I also think volunteering is something... If you, do you remember studying the Declaration of Independence? Yeah, it's, a, it's that thing you had to learn. Uh, and and there's, a, there's a line in there that, are, that a lot of politicians like to cite this type of year, time of year. It says, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We, we've all heard that line. I mean, who doesn't love, love some happiness? I know I do. Uh, but, but the really most, to me, the most important part of that document, and I talk about the Declaration of Independence a lot. I even talked about it at my uh, clerk, uh, Tim's wedding, because I mean, what could be more romantic than the Declaration of Independence? Um, but I talked about it because in that last paragraph, right above where our founding fathers signed their name, it said, and in support of this declaration, we pledge our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. You see, that's the cost of the freedom. That's the cost of the independence. And, and as you sit there and you think, well, how do I pledge my life, my fortune, my sacred honor? It's simple. Just volunteer. Just support your community. Because if you do that, you will, you will help build our community. You will help build each other. Together, we will make this country so wonderful. And it only takes is volunteering. And as I'm looking out there today, I think I have 50 more reasons to believe we're gonna be really great. So that's it for me. I have one announcement though. I think at 11.30, uh, they're going to do a 21-gun salute down at the local funeral home here, so do not be alarmed. It is not fires, you know, guns that are being shot at anyone. It is just a 21-gun salute in the air. And that will probably be going on somewhere still in the course of this event today. Uh, but now it is my pleasure to introduce Doris Roach. Doris um, is a naturalized citizen. Uh, she comes to us from Germany, uh, where she met her husband. He was serving in the armed forces. And then uh, that was in like 1963, I think you said. And then in 64, you got married. And in 65, you came here. Her first stop was Washington, D.C. And then she lived back and forth between the United States and, and uh, Germany while her husband served in the Vietnam War, the Korean War. And continued. Not war, not war, not Korean War. Not Korean War. Yeah, okay. No, thank you. Uh, uh, but. Hubie, we're happy to have her here today, and I'm gonna, I don't want to tell too much more because I don't want to ruin her thunder here. Uh, you said it all. Well, now it's your turn. See, I didn't talk about sister cities and all that. Okay. All right, you're on. Thank you. Good morning. Well, I have all my speech written out on the computer, but unfortunately my printer didn't cooperate with me. So I read it three times, and I hope it comes out right. Anyway, my name is Doris Roach, and like Judge Brandy already said, I was born and raised in Germany. Met my husband, and in 65, we came over here. First place I came to the States was in uh, Washington, D.C. What a great place to come first time for the United States and come to the state cap uh, capital. And we, we had assignments back and forth to Germany six years again, and then came back. And when he retired, he started working for the post office in St. Louis. And after that retirement, we moved to Belleville. It was 1980. And then my parents decided they wanted to come over here for good. But the only way they could do this was if a blood relative that was naturalized could be the sponsor. Well, I had to put my application in to become an American citizen. And in 1983, I became one of you. I took my vows to become a citizen. It was down in East St. Louis. I, it was an emotional and sad day in one way because they tell you or ask you that you give up your homeland and defend your new country. But then on the other side, it didn't really make any difference because I still could go to Germany anytime I wanted to. Nobody stopped me. The only difference, I went with a different passport. So that was the only difference. And uh, so then during the years, uh, I was pretty active, you know, with the uh, sister city and all this. And, but to me, being a citizen, all I can say, be proud to become an American citizen and live by their actions. 
show it. So, but pretty soon you will take that vow and you might have a little bit emotional feeling, but it's a good feeling because you are in a great country. So uh, I wish you well and I wish you good luck for the rest of your future and I hope you enjoy and love this nation. Which leads me into the Belva sister cities. When I first came here, I was here a couple of years and I thought Belva needs a sister city with Germany. Because then I realized the big heritage Germany, uh, Belva had with Germany. So I approached Mayor Rich Brower at that time and I said, we need a sister city. Well, this was in 1982. It took us several years. Nobody really wanted to commit to anything until Paderborn 1988 uh, contacted us. And so in 89, a delegation from Paderborn of 45 came over here. And I would say they came over here to check us out, see if we were worthy to be the new uh, sister city. And apparently we approved because 80, in 1990, we were invited to come over to Paderborn. So there was another delegation of 45. And uh, so they called it, 89, they called it the engagement of our sister cities. 1990, it was the official wedding. So in that time on, uh, every other year, a group, a delegation went to Germany in 1992, 94, and I think 96. And they kind of tapered off because People had, you know, several people had already been there a few times, and it just, you know, but still, people were invited by host families that they hosted them, so they still went over there. In 1991, 93, and 95, and I don't think 97, a group from Paderborn came over here. But this friendship, even though the groups didn't go over there anymore, it continued. And then uh, we started a youth exchange in 91, and in order to be Belva Sister Cities Incorporated International, we had to have a youth exchange. So we, the first time we sent a group, I think it was 91 or 92, I can't remember. There was only four students we, we sent to Germany. The following year, they sent a group over here. And the group got bigger and bigger until finally financially it was a burden, really have to say that, because uh, Air, the airfare cost and everything and to host them to take them places so we cut it down to 12 but this has been going on since 91 unfortunately COVID kind of stopped it in 19, uh, 20, uh, 2019 was the last group we had and this year we sent a group of 11 students to Paderborn, Germany and next year hopefully we'll have about the same amount to come over here but then uh, early 2000 uh, I approached Belvis uh, High School East and West and asked them, because Paderborn requested this, if we could do a long-term student exchange up to a semester. So by East and West finally agreed they would accept three students to each. So they start coming over here and in return, we could send the host family, their uh, daughter or son to Germany the next year, anywhere from two weeks to six weeks. Some of them actually stayed the whole summer, some of them stayed for two months. And really friendship, they were uh, made a lot of friendship. Even the parents did where they were invited to Germany or come over here. So I always told them, hey, it's a cheap vacation to go because you don't have to pay for a hotel or food, you know, and it works out great. So I'm, we're lucky that this uh, exchange has started again and we have three students for the long-term students over here now. So in their uh, host family uh, will be able to go to Germany next year. But uh, and really, you don't have to be German full-blooded or by marriage. Anybody can join sister cities. We always have a lot of fun. We have meetings, we have get-togethers. So I truly think it's one of the best organizations. And I think it uh, between Paderborn and, and Belleville, it sparked up a lot of new friendships. So, but, and uh, I hope that all of you, like the Judge Grandy said, hope you will enjoy your new stay and like I said, live it by the action that you're proud to be a new American citizen. Thank you. Doris is now going to, uh, quite a voice, and she is going to sing the German National Anthem for us. 
Einigkeit und Recht und Freiheit für das deutsche Vaterland. Danach lasst uns alle streben, brüderlich mit Herz und Hand. Einigkeit und Recht und Freiheit sind des Glückes unterfahren. Im Ganze dieses Glückes Deutsches Vaterland, im Ganze dieses Glückes für Deutsches Vaterland. All right, it's, it's almost that time. Uh, this time it's my. Uh, Pleasure. The court recognizes Carolia Rajakopo. She's a U.S. attorney for the United States attorney for the Southern District of Illinois, and we are almost related. We figured this out earlier today. So, uh, please come forward, Carolia. My name is Carolia Rajagopal, and on behalf of the Department of Homeland Security and the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, I am so pleased to present to the court. 49 candidates from 26 countries for naturalization whose applications have been approved by the Attorney General of the United States. I respectfully request that the court administer the oath of allegiance to these candidates for naturalization. Has it been shown to satisfaction? Oh, you folks can have a seat again. Thank you. <laughs> Has it been shown to the satisfaction of the Department of Justice that these applicants have resided in the United States during the periods required by the acts of Congress, and that during all of these periods they have been and still are persons of good moral character, attached to the principles of the Constitution of the United States, and disposed to the good order and happiness of the United States? On behalf of the Department of Justice, I am authorized to say that this showing has been made. I like that part about happiness in the United States, don't you? Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to take the oath of allegiance to the United States. The oath has two parts. In the first part, you will absolutely and entirely renounce allegiance to any foreign state or sovereignty. In the second part of the oath, you will swear to support and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. These words are plain. The oath means what it says. I charge you that if any person among you has a different intention in taking the oath, you reveal it now to that end, and the petition for naturalization filed by you will be withdrawn or dismissed. Any takers? Okay, good. All right. Um, now I'm going to have you stand in the, in, as I call your country. And after that, we are going to take the oath. So, they're alphabetical. Uh, Azerbaijan, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Please stand. Yeah. Burkina Faso, Canada, China, Ecuador, Germany. Where's Germany? Good. Haiti. Honduras, India, Jordan, Kazakhstan, Kenya, Mexico, Pakistan, Peru, Philippines, North Africa, South Africa, South Korea, Thailand, Turkey, United Kingdom, Uzbekistan, Venezuela, 
Vietnam, and West Bank. All right, there you are. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please raise your right hand. This is the moment. Repeat after me. I hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state or sovereignty, of whom or which I have heretofore been a subject or citizen, that I will support and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by law, that I will perform non-combatant service in the armed forces of the United States when required by law, that I will perform work of national importance under civilian direction when required by the law, and that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, so help me God. Welcome as citizens of the United States of America. All right, thank you, good job. We're gonna have a seat and the Beverly East Band is gonna play a selection for us.
so much. Thank you. All right, now it's my honor to introduce our U.S. Marshal Dave Davis, who will lead in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Thank you, Judge. <clears throat> Congratulations again to everyone. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Congratulations. All righty, this is uh, microphone time. Tim, are you, are you our uh, master of ceremonies here? Okay. We, we picked the biggest guy on the stage to hand the microphone to you, knowing that you would definitely talk into it when he handed it to you. Uh, he's harmless. Okay. You can all have a seat, but stand up when it's your turn. Try to stay cool and... Uh, Well, I'm a little bit nervous. This is quite a public speech. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, for such festive ceremony today, global administration, all people who organized it. I really didn't expect that to be that way, but it's really nice and looks so beautiful. Um, so we moved to America with my family, which is my husband, who is an American and grew up in Belleville area. Uh, we met with him in Kazakhstan. Um, Almost 10 years ago now, uh, I was a practicing physician in Kazakhstan and we met and got married in 2018. Then we, after pandemic years, we decided to move to America in 2021. In America, I had uh, really good opportunities as a specialist to join a research team an amazing research team in Washington University in Diabetes Center Research and I help uh, world-class scientists and physicians who try to unwind all the mysteries that are what is diabetes and how to help to fight it for people because it's quite a common problem for a lot of people worldwide, not only in America. So currently I work in research and um, we do uh, have some volunteering service as well with our team in the lab which is very fun always and always satisfying to do and gratifying uh, we have uh, Ben has also his parents in O'Fallon who live in O'Fallon who lived in O'Fallon for the last 30 years which uh, who always supported us on our journey to move to a different country to adjust here well and I'm really grateful to that to them for them uh, and uh, right now I'm working on my big dream to become a physi physician in America as well. So um, hopefully that will work out. I'm trying my best. And also this is interesting that Belleville has such a big German heritage, um, which is a really good connection to my family because my father grew up in a city in Kazakhstan that had uh, Gulag, maybe you've heard about it, that was a thing where people were sent to, in Soviet Union and there were like a big population of German people who were sent to that city uh, that had a, one of the Gulags and after it was uh, uh, all, uh, they, were, they were freed, they became an intellectual force of that city and became professors and teachers at medical universities in that city and as well in technical universities. Um, so my, my father grew up around, a, a lot uh, among a uh, big German population and my grandmother is a physician so she had a lot of people who taught her how to become a physician. So we have connection in that way so this is very interesting. And when I came to Belleville I was really happy to find out that this is also a big, uh, ger there's a big German heritage and culture here. So I'm happy to become a citizen today. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Hope you have a great day. Hello everyone, uh, I'm from Azerbaijan, uh, I came here almost 10 years ago 
uh, it's very important day for me and people like me. Uh, me and my wife, she's uh, from Illinois. We've been waiting for this day for a long time. Uh, I came here uh, in 2015 uh, as a student, uh, but I also had a diploma uh, from my own country. And I thought I need to finish master's here, but uh, before even I finished, uh, I found a job that recognized uh, my education in my uh, home country, which was uh, great. I work as an engineer here, uh, which is my dream job with my dream wife in a dream country. And it's a very memorable day uh, for us. And thank you for uh, creating this amazing stage and making it a bit more memorable. And uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Hello, my name is Aida. I'm from Jordan. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to be an American citizen. And I'd like to say thank you for my daughters and Yasmin to be here and to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sukanya Myers. I'm from uh, Thailand. I'm living with my husband in uh, Centralia. It's the, uh, this city is very nice and this country is, has a lot of opportunity. I love to be here in America. I'm proud of myself and about my journey to be here. And I hope uh, everyone lucky and then success in your life in America, the land and opportunity. And thank you everyone to uh, manage this uh, ceremony. I'm very proud of myself and I'm proud of you guys. I hope uh, we're helping each other about our community and our country. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, my name is Evelyn. I'm from Peru. I've been living here for almost six years. Um, I'm so proud uh, to be American today. My dad and my sister became American in the last ceremony. So um, I'm grateful that my whole family is here, reunited, um, making a better life for us in this beautiful country. Um, I don't know, my sister is here with her boyfriend. I'm so very happy for today. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Yeah, hi. My name is Mary Joy. Uh, I live in Illinois by uh, Effingham. Then I am so proud that I'm here in America and nice to meet you all of you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Hello everyone, um, my name is Mariana and I come from Mexico. I'm very proud and thankful to be American. Thank you. And thank you to my husband over there. Hello. My name is Sonia. Okay, okay. 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 And thank you so much for allowing me to be an American citizen. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Annette. I moved here from Kenya about five years ago. And I'm, I'm pretty emotional, actually. So I'm grateful for the opportunity and for the pomp and circumstance. My family is in Kenya. But they are with me on my phone, so thank you to everybody. Thank you.
Hello, good morning. I'm Monica Ryle from Philippines. Um, I moved here with my husband and I'm very thankful for him because he's being supportive for, for all this journey. And uh, I wish you all good luck for the opportunities that awaits for us. Thank you. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Rui Hofsung. I arrived in the United States in 1992. I went to school in Skoda, Illinois. I love this country. I'm Jessica right now, like I said, everybody else is emotional as I am. I'm grateful, thankful to become an American citizen. Thank you. Thank you. I come from Haiti. I'm so grateful to be here. To be, to, to, to be here today, American citizen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Be sure and hold your microphone here so we can hear you, okay? My name is Rusev Singh. I was born in India. I came here 2017. Today, I am very thankful to this opportunity to America. My two sons are American said, why what? Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Arun Porosco. I'm from Mexico. I'm coming here from 16 years old. And I'm probably to be American citizen. Thank you for everything. Thank you. My name is Chong Lin Ao. I'm originally from South Korea and I live in Thailand, Vietnam, and raised with three kids. Yeah, I'm so happy to be a citizen of the United States. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I am from Venezuela. I've been here 12 years. Um, I am so proud to be here today. Very thankful, especially thankful to my husband over there. He's recording me. He is the reason that I wake up to the life of my dreams every single day. I wake up to happiness and I feel like the luckiest person in the world to be here. He has supported me through everything since we met seven years ago and I am the most grateful to him in my life. So thank you and thank you everyone that's here supporting loved ones. Thank you. Hi everybody. I am Safa from Jordan. I like it America. I like it America because I stay here from eight years. I am very happy. Thank you for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Aida Aida from uh, uh, West Africa, Burkina Faso. I'm so thankful to be an American citizen today. Thanks for, uh, thank you to everyone and thank you to my husband. Thank you. My name is Xu from China. So first of all, I want to thank my wife, um, you know, who supported me along the way. Uh, yeah, I came uh, here about 14, 14 years ago, you know, to join college here, and then met her in college. We've been dating uh, and married for almost 10 years. So very proud of to be here, you know, and very honored to become your uh, fellow American. Thank, thank you. you. Hello everyone, my name is Jelaine Gordon. I come from Philippines. Um, I want to thank to my husband and my son to be here with me and I'm I am very proud. I'm so thankful to be a US citizen today. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello everyone. I my name is Bi Tran. I'm from Vietnam. And first of all, I want to congratulate to all of you and so proud of you. I come to America is seven years ago. So America is to me is my dream country and they have great opportunity for school and college. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Aida Morales. I am from Mexico. I have uh, seven years uh, living in the United States. I live in Robinson, Illinois. Um, I feel proud about myself because now I have citizenship and I am grateful with uh, the country. Um, congratulations for all. Um, thank you for the words. Uh, was very emotional, the message. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sharon. I'm from the southeast of England, which had like 14,000 people. I moved over to America in 2013, and now I live in a town with 650 people. But I love it. I love America, and I'm so proud today to be standing here as an American citizen. And I want to thank my husband who will be celebrating our 11th year wedding anniversary in November. My son became a citizen a couple of months ago and his fiance and my grandkids are here today. Thank you all so much and thank you and God bless America. My name is Thi Kim Chi Nguyen. I'm from Vietnam. Um, I live here uh, more than three years and I have two children. I very love here and uh, thank you my husband supporting for me. I love American. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Mexico and I'm just gonna say congratulations to everyone. God bless America. Thank you so much. Hello everyone, my name is Nan, uh, I, I am from Vietnam, I am citizenship, I am very happy, I thank you so much. Hello everybody, um, I am from Ecuador. I came here uh, seven years ago. I, I, yes, I live in Steelville, Illinois. I am so proud today because my goal is done. So I am grateful with my, first with my God and after with my husband and my friend. They are here support me and I am going to be, um, Happy, happy because now I am citizen, U.S. citizen. Yeah, I am excited. Okay, <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So you guys all get to feel this excitement. We were just born here. You know, this is so cool. <laughs> My name is Kevin Van Wick. I'm from South Africa. Uh, first off, I want to say thank you to my family, uh, my wife, thank you for the support and helping us along this journey. Thank you to everybody here for giving us this opportunity and congratulations to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, 
and I found this passion as an internal medicine physician to build my opportunity even further, not just mankind, mankind of various races, and thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Flavia Brown, and I was born in Tegucigalpa, Honduras. I came to the U.S. in 2010 to pursue a master's degree, and God blessed me and guided my steps so that with the support of friends and family, I could legally work here as a Spanish teacher for many, many years uh, on a H-1 visa. And finally, God blessed me with a wonderful husband who served in the military, and today, I'm not only proud to call myself a military spouse, but also an American citizen. Um, a dream not of thousands, but millions of people who pursue the desire to live in a place where you cannot just only dream to live in a place like this, to have a better uh, quality of life, a better education, and where our rights are being protected and respected but we're a place where all of us can today make that dream a reality. Congratulations to all of you who are becoming a citizen today. It takes courage, like you said today. Congratulations. Thank you. That was beautiful, thank you. You should run for office, you know, that was just excellent, yeah, totally. Hello everyone, uh, it's really uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, my name is Bong Su from South Korea. And uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, for us uh, having, like, having us uh, in such a nice ceremony. So uh, I'm really happy to be a member of uh, the country of freedom. Thank you. Thank you. very proud to be your citizen today. I'm very thankful for my husband and thank you for you. Thank you. Thank you. I wasn't expecting this to be a big event. I thought it was just going to be in a small room, maybe an officer and a judge, but here I am, speaking to hundreds of people. By the way, my name is Kobe, I was born in the Philippines. Uh, I got here in my teens, so Belleville and St. Louis area kind of shaped me into my adulthood. And uh, yeah, here I am. I really got nothing to say, but congratulations to all of us. Uh, yeah, it was a long journey. Fee wasn't, fee wasn't, uh, wasn't cheap at all. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I can't wait for other opportunities that I can do. But I'm definitely trying those brat works and traveling the world outside the U.S. with a U.S. passport, introducing myself to everyone, saying, "Hey, I'm from Illinois. I'm a United States citizen. So hey, God bless America." Germany. I've uh, been here for 30 years, so I'm so excited to be here today. I came here with my mother. I live in a small town, Fairmont City, and I have a wonderful community and such a great group of friends who have been here with me. And I'm so thankful for you guys and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Aziza Nowak, I'm from Ophalan here. I'm from Uzbekistan, born there, raised in Samarkand. 
Uh, my country's big uh, part is the South Road, if you know that. Uh, I'm very grateful to be becoming an American citizen. And congratulations, guys. And thanks to my husband and my son who come to support me. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Babsa. I am from India. Came 1999, long journey. It was not an easy travel, easy journey. I have a long history behind. But I do appreciate it. United States helped me every step of the way. In my kids' race over here, studied and everything. This country helped me so much from everything. I'm really thankful to United States, all the judges, all the deities and officer of the immigration. Thank you so much and I'm so grateful for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Mete Naz. I'm from uh, southern Turkey. Came here in 2016, pursued undergrad and did my grad. I'm an engineer. Myself working in aerospace, uh, proud to be a legal immigrant, and uh, God bless America. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Nikita. I came from India. I still remember the moment when I land here. I'm very thankful to America. It gave me lots of opportunity to grow here. Um, thank you all. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Yang Chu. My name, uh, I'm from Vietnam. Uh, congrats everyone here today. It's been a journey. Uh, thank you and have a good day. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Meet Patel. I came in United States around like almost 10 years ago as a mechanical engineering student and slowly I just started working and currently I work in St. Louis as an engineer and I own a bar and restaurant in Alton, Illinois. So just slowly setting up. I have my wife, parents and grandparents here to support me. I want to just take time to thank everyone and everyone on the panel too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Paul Patel and I'm thank you everybody for being here and I met my wife in Alton, Illinois like six years ago. She's right here. We have three kids and I work as an engineer for an ammunition company. We support law enforcement and war fighters. Also as just a volunteering work, uh, so far this year we built almost six wheelchair ramps for disabled veterans and I'm so happy to do the volunteer work. When we talk to those guys, it's just great to do the, this kind of job for community. Thank you all. Yeah, my name is Qasim Zia, I'm from Pakistan. I was the only one announced from Pakistan over here, it made me feel so special. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, um, District Judge, District Attorney, and all the panel on the floor, and um, our team from USCIS. Thank you so much for organizing this event. It's beautiful. Um, 
Yeah, I first, when I left the country, um, I was literally 20 years old and I left for England for my education. Um, I did my bachelor's and master's from London, England um, in international business and, mar and marketing respectively. Um, after that, I got an opportunity to work over there for another several years in management. I, I did. Um, afterwards, um, I left from there, went to back to Pakistan for a year or so um, to spend some time with my family. Um, then I thought about opening a business in Dubai, UAE. Um, I did two years over there. Um, we worked so hard, got this restaurant up and running until we ran into COVID, unfortunately. And due to a lot of losses, we had to uh, let it go. Um, but then I decided to uh, move down over here while my wife, she is right there with our three-year-old child who wouldn't sit in the front in the hot bath. In all that um, hot weather. Uh, but thank you so much for everyone uh, being here. Uh, it's incredible uh, to, to be a part of uh, this event today. I'm, I'm glad to be a citizen today. Um, I just wanted to back up a little bit, um, talk about when um, our district judge was talking about her parents. I just wanted to mention to my parents as well. Uh, in 2006, when um, I left, um, right exactly after three years, I lost my dad. Uh, which was a great inspiration for me and I was in England and I couldn't understand the funeral um, Especially when you're around this age uh, You don't know the importance or maybe you're too young to understand What they mean to you in your life? Um, I uh, I can't I can't put it into words what our parents do this uh, do for us when we are young um, from the time we can't even change our diapers can't like you know survive without them and every moment of their life they they watch us like you know while we're raising while, while we're growing up um when i was away and then after three years when i lost my dad like um i started living independently and i started feeling the value of parents and how important are they in in our life and it's just the kind of environment these days when i see like when children become teenagers after teenager when they become old like I, I see it it hurts my like you know it it breaks my heart like how sometimes parents are treated uh, it's unfortunate um, and I just wish like everyone could show love and affection for their parents how they showed in the in the in the young age when you were like little uh, but yeah thank you so much thanks for everybody thank you Please have to They play the beautiful music. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for the day. All right, now we say the best for last. Hello, everyone. My name is Zalbiana. I'm from Yang. Yeah, so happy today. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, congratulations. Good to get to know you a little better. All right, what a lovely, lovely Oktoberfest naturalization class. Uh, it's now time to recognize a few dignitaries and then we're gonna get on our way. We're gonna present certificates after the ceremony here. We'll do that down here in front of the flags. 
But let's recognize a few folks that, that came here to celebrate with you today. First of all, we have a couple of St. Clair County uh, judges that joined us today. They, are, they hold court right behind us. It's Stacy Campbell and Judge Tamika Purchase. And then, uh, uh, having left us already, we had Belleville Mayor Patty Gregory and uh, Paderborn Mayor Dreyer. Uh, somewhere in the crowd today is Belleville City Clerk Jenny Myers. She's usually running around toting something. Uh, don't know where you are, Jenny. Wave your hand if you're here somewhere. Anyway, she's, she's out and about. Uh, then we have the Belleville Jazz Orchestra directed by Mark Tessero. Thank you for your performance. We have the Mascuda High School ROTC that did the flag presentation today, presented the colors. Thank you. Thank you. We have Karalia Rajakapol, the Assistant U.S. Attorney. I try to put the emphasis on the right syllable. Okay. We have Dave Davis, the U.S. Marshal, next to her. Carrie Frick, if you're out there, she's the one that makes this event happen. She's the Oktoberfest coordinator. Where are you, Carrie? Ah, uh, hiding again. Okay. Uh, then we have Kathy McAllister. She's the Chief, chief Deputy Clerk of, uh, of my court, and she... Her job is to basically make it all happen, and she does. And uh, I want to brag on her a little bit. We were audited recently, our cyclical audit. We had a perfect score, and, and it's in large part to Kathy. She did an excellent job. And then we have her counterpart in the clerk in the district court. We have Monica Stump. She's the clerk of court. And we have Tom Gilreth. He's the chief deputy uh, U.S. district clerk. Uh, we have uh, United States and citizenship and immigration staff. They're, they're around us everywhere. Uh, we have the guy that keeps me in line, Tim Foley. He's my courtroom deputy. And then we have our court reporter who's taking this all down today, Arikia Schuster. And we have uh, the Daughters of the American Revolution. They'll be presenting you with flags at the end of the, the program today. And I'm always very thankful that they come and, and uh, celebrate with us. And then we have the Sons of the American Revolution. Uh, this is something new. We haven't had you before. Where are you? Yeah. Don't see you. Okay. Then we have uh, the, the Women uh, Women's League of Voters. They are here to register you to vote today. Should you be so inclined to get registered to vote, please do so. Thank you for coming. Uh, we have Rich Donner. He's with Mudge Legal Video, and he will. Uh, uh, there'll be a link so you can get a copy of this if you'd like it. The ceremony. We have the Belleville East High School Volunteers. Where are you at? We have uh, the National Exchange Club, and these are the three groups that create this event. The Belleville Shriners Club, they're over there, my brother's a Shriner. And we have the Sister Cities Program that, uh, that many of you are familiar with and you've heard a lot about today from Doris. Uh, and then uh, finally we have staff members of both Senator Duckworth and Senator Durbin who are here with us today. Raise your hand. There you are, over there. Thank you for attending. Um, all right, Tim, it's that moment you can come and close court. All rise. District court for the Southern District of Illinois is now closed.